San Antonio squatters, a story making national headlines playing out right here at home. We first brought you an example of residential squatting last night. It happened when a man agreed to do some work on a house. In exchange, the owner said he could stay for a few days, but now he's refusing to leave. Abraham Mendez tells us he wishes us his family knew about how to deal with squatters sooner. I would have immediately gone to the consul's office and gotten the information that, that I, I have. I would have uh, also done the, the um, uh, process of eviction a lot sooner. It's worth the money. Mendez family says they contacted San Antonio police several times trying to get this man out. We obtained reports from the police department today. They say the alleged squatter told officers he's allowed to be staying there. Police write they explained the protections he has under the state's residency law, which is what allows evictions to take place. Mendez family is moving forward with eviction proceedings, but they say they shouldn't have to, especially when Governor Abbott recently stated anyone squatting in your home is breaking the law. Police pointed us to Health and Human Services and the constable's office when we asked about the potential eviction. And right now, states all over the country are reevaluating squatters' rights, including Texas. Tonight, we're taking a look at what is and isn't allowed and who those rights were really intended for. Here's Fox says Jordan Elder with more. This has been dominating national headlines, but each state has their own set of guidelines for squatters. We wanted to know how common these cases are in Texas. They're becoming more common, unfortunately. In my practice, it's very common, uh, but it typically relates to things like boundaries as opposed to just, you know, someone um, finding a vacant house and jumping in and staying there for a period of time. I don't see that. Attorney Noel Bryant says squatters' rights, which in legal terms are called adverse possession, are important in rural communities. He gave the example of massive family ranches split up over the generations. If you meet the guidelines, you can claim the property should belong to you, and a judge can grant that. All of these laws date back to the Civil War era. The government didn't want land to go to waste, so if you fenced off a property, took care of it, paid the taxes, etc., you could go to court and claim it as your own. It's a far cry from what we occasionally see today, called residential squatting. Where people will find a house that's been sitting vacant for a while and move in and start claiming it as their own. That type of scenario is not, not allowed at all. You can't just go steal somebody else's property with malicious intent. Where is the line between squatting and criminal trespassing? Um, if there was a hard line rule, like a case or a statute or something, it would make it a lot easier. It's mostly a call of the courts and the criminal justice system. So how are other states combating this issue? Florida outlawed squatters' rights altogether. In Georgia, a new law would give property owners more rights to evict someone who illegally took possession of a home. That's waiting for that governor's signature. I reached out to our governor's office to see if anything like that is in the works in Texas. The attorneys we spoke to assured us in order to claim squatters' rights, someone has to have been on the property for a matter of years and meet several other requirements. They urge you to call police if you think someone is squatting or trespassing on your property. And if you own multiple properties, visit them often. Jordan Elder, Fox SA.